Hello and welcome to The Big Interview, an initiative by ICICI Direct. Today, I have a very special guest with me, Mr. Nilesh Shah, Group President and Managing Director, Kotak Mahindra Asset Management Company. Welcome, Mr. Shah. So, uh, today the current situation is very tough. India is going through very tough uh, times and this time the severity of the crisis seems to be deep. Um, states are um, extending the lockdowns and no doubt demand and the consumption is being hit. So, what is your view on uh, the current scenario and its impact on uh, the GDP numbers? Undoubtedly, this is one of the toughest period India is witnessing. We have to make a very, very tough choice between lives and livelihoods. Last year, at the beginning of the crisis, we took the call of protecting lives over livelihood, and that worked out well in terms of protecting lives. But unfortunately, many livelihood was lost. Our June quarter GDP came down by 24%, highest in the history of independent India. Now, we are trying to balance between lives and livelihoods by, on one side, creating vaccination, on other side, creating regional lockdowns, rotational lockdowns, on third side, augmenting healthcare infrastructure by ramping up hospital beds, oxygen capacity, and so on and so forth. Fourth, we are also advising people to adopt COVID-appropriate behavior. And through this combination, we are hoping that we will be able to balance between lives and livelihoods. A lot will depend upon how these four things work together. A rapid vaccination, as demonstrated in UK, Israel, US, helps in containing COVID-19. A regional lockdown, rotational lockdown, demonstrated in my own city of Mumbai, shows that it helps in containing COVID, building up healthcare infrastructure from hospital beds to medicines to oxygen, again, is undisputable need. But the most important thing is also COVID-appropriate behavior by citizens. If all these four can come together, very, very quickly, then only we can avoid national lockdown. But if we don't bring these four behaviors, then national lockdown is inevitable and that will extract its cost in terms of GDP slowdown. Until uh, recently, I mean, in the beginning of the year, sir, uh, the growth was quite visible and inflation was uh, rising slowly, but it was under control. But the, now the situation seems to have reversed. I mean, we are now uncertain about what's happening, with, what's going to happen with the growth numbers and inflation is uh, raising its head uh, now once again. How big is the challenge uh, for uh, RBI this time? I mean, they have to balance the two. Undoubtedly. RBI is facing one of the toughest challenges, just like the country. On one side, they are responsible for controlling inflation under the mandate of the government and parliament. On the other side, they have to ensure that growth doesn't suffer, livelihood doesn't suffer. On the third side, they have to maintain India's foreign exchange reserves and currency and credibility. They also have to ensure financial sector stability. So clearly today they are like a cricket batsman on the fifth day pitch where ball is swinging by and they are holding on. In my opinion, RBI has done an excellent job in managing Indian economy throughout the turmoil of COVID-19. They have kept it inflation reasonably under control. They have provided liquidity for growth. They have kept interest rates under check despite large increase in government's borrowing program. And by and large, they have maintained financial sector stability with money market and rates market functioning normally. Going forward, 
RBI has to marshal all its resources to balance between growth and inflation. In my opinion, we will see two innings from RBI. In the first inning, they will be pro-growth because of the second wave of COVID-19. And in the second inning, they will be containing inflation as by then growth would have picked up its own momentum. But in order to support RBI, we have to ensure that there is COVID appropriate behavior, there is vaccination, there is ramping up of healthcare infrastructure, and there is regional and rotational lockdowns rather than national lockdown. So if we talk about the uh, markets, uh, equity markets, a uh, recent correction saw uh, domestic institutional investors coming back into the market. If we go by the data which was released uh, for the month of March, uh, at no uh, formal data by NC is out, but we'll be awaiting uh, that. But it clearly shows that the asset under management by, uh, of the equity funds is on the rise. So can we say that mutual funds are back into the market and they would be now supporting the markets from these levels? So... Gitu, we were never out of the market. In the month of March, April, May, when markets were at rock bottom level, we were large buyers, especially against the FPIs who were large sellers. Now that money almost doubled or more than doubled in a very short period of time. It's quite natural for investors to take profit out from you know, that increased valuation or increased size and which is where we did see from September to probably Feb 21, September 20 to Feb 21 redemptions by investors and hence selling by mutual fund. Okay. Fortunately, despite second wave of COVID-19, investors are using correction as an opportunity to invest. Again, FPIs have become seller for the month of April. And fortunately, domestic investors are buying in. In my opinion, we will continue to get good SIP flows in the months to come. And as markets correct, there will be extra flows coming from investors who had booked profit at higher level or from those investors who wanted to participate but were waiting for right level. Again, equity market flows as well as index movement will be linked with how we manage COVID-19 crisis. A rapid vaccination, rap ramp up of healthcare infrastructure, regional rotational lockdowns, and uh, ramp up of uh, healthcare infrastructure. All these four things are necessary for economy to do well and if economy does well, markets and investors will also do well. Very true. So what will be your advice uh, to the first timers and the young investors who really want to enter the market and create wealth for them and want to retire by 45, 50 years of age? So what advice would you give to them? So one advice to younger generation is that please think income minus savings equal to expenses. Many of them believe income minus expenses equal to credit card borrowings. Please don't borrow money for consumption. Please make this habit of making regular investments even if it's a small amount. Let the power of compounding work for you. So number one is the habit of regular savings. No matter how much you earn, try to save some money every month on a regular basis and invest it wisely. As in our uh, proverb, we say, bund bund se hoj banta hai. Little drops of water makes an ocean. So do regular investment. The second one is long-term investment. I mean, you can't create wealth overnight. There's no shortcut to success. If you want sweet mangoes, you have to wait for 12 years for mango 
tree to bear fruit. Same thing is in investment. You have to give time for your wealth to compound. So be a long-term investor. And third and final thing is disciplined asset allocation. Don't put all eggs in one basket. That applies as common sensibly to investment. Divide your investment across equities, debt, real estate, gold, and offshore assets. Today, you have ability to invest even with 500 rupee in any of these asset classes. Real estate, units of real estate investment trust can give you same exposure like real estate. SIPs, equity mutual funds, direct stock also can be done with as little amount as 500 rupee. Fixed income, anyway, you can invest in that kind of denomination. So follow this three golden principle, regular investment, long-term investment, and disciplined asset allocation. Sir, in case of equity, which of uh, the verticals or uh, you know uh, the segments or the sectors uh, would you recommend buying in at the, the current uh, levels? So there are two or three ways of looking at equity investment. One, you know, if you do two by two metrics, there are good businesses and good promoters. There are bad businesses and bad promoters. Now, you can never make money with a bad business and bad promoter. If you are with good investor and good, good business and good promoter, you are more likely to make money. There will, it will be very difficult to lose money. And if you're in between a bad business, but a good promoter or a good business, but bad promoter, then your luck will make money for you rather than your investment. So focus on buying good businesses and good promoter. Now, but how do you define good business or good promoter? A good business is a business which generates more return on capital than the cost of capital. If you earn 12% and pay 8%, you will always make money. But if you are earning 8% and paying 12%, one day you will become bankrupt. So focus on good businesses which earn more than the cost of capital. How do you define good promoter? Very simple. Look at his past behavior to find out, is he shortchanging minority investors? Is his government's practices good, bad, ugly? So good promoter, good business is one way to look at it. The second metrics is markets could be cheap, markets could be fair, markets could be expensive. Now with the benefit of hindsight, we know March, April 2020 market was cheap. At that point of time, market cap to GDP ratio had come down to as little as 50%. We know with the benefit of hindsight, that in January 2020, markets were expensive because COVID-19 was raging in other parts of the world. Economy was slowing down because of COVID-19 related restrictions and markets had not yet discounted that. Today, we believe we are in a fair valuation range, little bit on the higher side of fair, but we are still fair valuation. Now in Jan 20, and you know, this is benefit of hindsight I'm illustrating. In Jan 20, when markets were looking expensive, one could have been underweight equity. In March 20, when markets were looking cheap, you could be overweight equity. And today when markets are fairly valued, you could be neutral weight equity. So buying more when things are cheap and selling when they have become expensive is one way to make money. The third way of making money is selection of right stocks. Now, if you buy good companies and stay with them over a period of time, it's bound to create value for you. Now, this is where investment and trading comes into play. Investment is like marriage, a lifelong commitment where you invest for a long period of time. Trading is more like short-term momentum investment. So you have to be very clear 
whether you are investing or whether you are trading now these are the three broad thumb rules good business good promoters buying when things are cheap selling when they are expensive and differentiating between investment and trading these are the basic pillars which will determine how much you should invest in equity where you should invest in equity and how long you should hold that equity investment so that you can make money so what should one strategy be in uh, short term medium term and long term and how uh, will mutual investment in mutual funds really help uh, one uh, build wealth so essentially if making money was easy all of us would have become billionaire making money is tough many a times you know people end up getting instant gratification but that's not sustainable investment is like birbal ki khichdi it takes time to build it takes time to cook now mutual funds here play an important role it gives you diversification compared to a single stock which can give much higher return it also gives much higher downside in mutual fund your returns are capped so is your downside so it gives you diversification second it gives you discipline you can start with as little as 500 rupees you can do a regular sip which will continue to debit from your bank account and keep on getting invested in the market without any effort from your side right third it gives you professional management uh we manage money on a professional basis by employing best of the talent and by and large we have outperformed benchmark indices over a period of time there are some occasions where we underperform indices but by and large we then catch up so mutual funds play a very important role for wealth creation for those investors who does not have time or inclination for managing their own money we provide a professional vehicle through which one can participate in wealth creation uh, sir looking at the the performance of the small and the mid cap uh, companies in last one, one and one and a half years uh, is it the right time to really make a shift from large caps to mid cap and small cap because it is being said that this is the year and the next two years belong to mid cap and small caps uh, are we right in believing so so if you are investing in small and mid cap because in last one year they have delivered more than 100% return that's not the right way to invest in small and mid cap you need to have temperament of investing in small and mid cap small and mid caps are highly volatile if they can go up 100% in one year please remember that in 2018 they were down also 50% in one year if you are only expecting upside but are not willing to take downside then small and mid cap is not the space for you only those investors who have aggressive risk profile who can take upside as well as downside they should invest in small and mid cap now from a valuation point of view today large cap mid cap small cap are broadly in equilibrium to their historical averages large cap is at a little premium small and mid caps are at near the historical averages so my recommendation will be you please decide your risk profile if you are extremely conservative investor please stay in large cap stocks large cap funds if you are average investors you can diversify in large cap as well as small and mid caps and if you are aggressive investors who is willing to take risk for higher upside you can withstand a downward correction you can come into small and mid cap stocks or small and mid cap funds there is no free lunch because you are willing to take downside you are able to participate in the upside very true uh, sir talking about two sectors pharma and it which have done uh, really very really well and uh, uh, valuation uh, side are they really stretched uh, or uh, do you think it's still a time to really get into these sectors and uh, reap uh, long term benefits so both pharma and it have done extremely well in last 2 3 years they are kind of defensive sectors where business generally doesn't get impacted because of covid 19 as you can seamlessly do work from home 
and more importantly in some business like pharma actually covid 19 is beneficial so because of that defensive nature both it and pharma has done extremely well from a valuation point of view we still believe tech is relatively better valued compared to pharma sector now obviously pharma sector is not very expensive it's just that compared to tech it is little higher value now when you look at pharma sector per se there are different kinds of companies within pharma sector one is a bulk truck api manufacturer they make bulk truck and give it to the uh, formulation maker now their business model is much less risky because they are just making drugs and giving it to the formulation maker they don't take the risk of drug approval or drug marketing then there are formulation maker which buys the drug and get the approval to launch the product if they get approval they make lot of money if they don't get approval they don't make lot of money within formulation maker there are some generic drugs maker who don't create a brand for their product so they are dependent upon a uh, distribution channel to push their product but then there are certain formulation maker which make branded product and people come to buy their brand by billing and they are willing to pay a premium right. then you have uh, companies which do basic research in the inventor drug now if they invent a drug they make lot of money but if they are fail if they fail in inventing a drug then they lose lot of money then you have pathology labs and that kind of thing and then you have hospital chains so when you look at pharma industry there are actually five six subsets and risk return is completely different in all of them so please be careful when you are investing in pharma or it it's far better to be diversified rather than concentrated and even today we believe there are companies in pharma as well as it sector where there is good growth opportunity and they are not expensively priced so one sector that you think uh, will be a story for next 2 to 3 years for investment so we to one sector where we are bullish is home improvement okay. uh, thanks to first as well as second wave many of us are operating from home and our home we have been open for outsider like electrician plumber painter carpenter for last one one and half years uh once this vaccination ensures that covid 19 is contained many of us will be focused on improving our home kahin pe tiles nikal gayi hai kahin pe fan nahi chal raha kahin pe paint ukhad gaya hai kahin pe parde kharab lag rahe hain now there will be a huge demand for home improvement in our opinion post covid 19 second many people will actually be looking to move into bigger houses as in this covid 19 all of us are running short of one room in our home right i have four bedroom hall kitchen i wish i had fifth someone has two bedroom hall kitchen they will be wishing if they had third so there will be demand for real estate which again will create demand for this home improvement items so in our opinion over next 2 3 years sectors belonging to home improvement like cement plywood paints tiles furniture fixture consumer durables they will all benefit from this ramp up of demand from this surge of demand and that sector should create wealth for investors over next couple of years so monsoon uh, which imd has predicted to be normal uh, this year again is the only silver lining that is you know everybody is uh, looking at so which are the sectors that one should keep in mind uh, with a good monsoon expected this time once again so if you look at monsoon it has far more impact on the rural economy than the urban economy and if monsoon is good it does benefit rural economy and apart from monsoon rural economy this year should also benefit one from higher agriculture prices 
if you see most of the agriculture produced price have gone up and hence there should be more money in the hands of rural consumers number 2 covid impact in urban india is far more because of the dense population but in rural india it will be far less because generally density of population is less put these three things together good monsoon higher income in the hands of consumers in rural india because of higher agriculture prices and lesser impact of covid 19 compared to urban india this will all come handy for companies which are dependent upon rural india or which draws majority of their profit from rural india so that could include uh, fmcg and your um, you know uh, real estate sector also. fmcg uh, farm uh, equipment company uh, sugar company so that's the entire segment which will benefit from rural economy so any sectors that one should really keep away from i mean the sectors that you are underweight on so more than sector geetu we need to be underweight bad companies run by bad managers uh very rarely you will be able to make money in such kind of companies now which are such sectors uh i think sectorally we believe sectors like construction real estate uh there if you are not with a good manager then you are in deep trouble uh by and large we have taken a call to avoid bad companies in this sector uh see essentially in order to make money it's extremely important to be with good promoter one who runs his business sensibly one who doesn't cheat minority shareholders now if you see sectors like real estate construction their investors have lost lots of money because of bad promoter behavior so it's not sector per se which is wrong it's the promoter which makes a difference what will be the ideal portfolio that uh, you would recommend uh, you know first timers to get into you uh, spoke about diversifying into different various assets uh, ideally uh, a few assets that one should really uh, hold uh, for certain so for any person first he has to identify his risk profile all youngsters are not alike some are conservative some are aggressive some are average second they also have to identify their investment objective i might be investing for buying a car which is more short to medium term or i might be investing for my retirement which is a longer term so find your risk profile find your investment objective and then create a portfolio most important thing are three things regular investment little drops of water make an ocean long term investment you have to wait for 12 years to get sweet mango after planting a mango tree and disciplined as asset allocation don't put all eggs in one basket these are the three fundamental principles which will ensure that a youngster will be able to generate good return on his portfolio thank you mr shah for being with us it was a pleasure speaking to you as always 